Hey and welcome back to our channel. My name is Ned. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a web form inside Caspio. Now the prerequisite to building a web form is you always have to have a table created first. If you don't know how to build a table in Caspio, check out the related video so that you can see more of a comprehensive guide on how to build a table, add all of your fields along with all the data types for the type of data that you wish to collect. In my use case today, I have a simple table that's going to store all the project related information. Once you have your table created, you want to navigate over to data pages. And then you want to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. This is going to bring up all the interfaces that you can build in Caspio, everything from submission forms, update forms, different types of reports for different layouts, calendars, charts for KPIs and metrics, along with HTML data pages if you're a little bit more tech savvy. By default, you can see that my submission form is already selected. So let's move on to the next screen. My table is already selected because I only have one table inside this application, but if I had multiple tables, then I can link my form to a different data source. Let's give this form a name. This is going to be for internal eyes only, so let's call this maybe project form. Down here, you can select a different style. Styles are all about the aesthetics, the look and feel of your form. So if your company has a specific palette, you can choose a preloaded style that Caspio provides, or you can fully modify your own style if you wish. You can also choose a different localization. Localizations are all about regional settings. It allows you to change the language of the form, maybe the date format, and even the currency if it's for a specific region. Let's move on to the next screen. Now it's asking me, what fields do I want to have on my web form? You can choose one field at a time, or you can move them all at once. Let's continue. And once you reach the screen, configure its properties. Here you can select your fields on the left-hand side one at a time and you can make modifications to your fields by clicking on the form element dropdown. And you're gonna be able to see a lot of options here on how you can modify each field. In my use case today for project name, I'm gonna leave that as a text field, and I'll just make that field required, which means somebody has to fill something inside that field before they can submit the form. For project description, we have the option here for text area, which is going to be for long text. I can see all the text that I'm typing, and I can also change the width and height according to my own preference. Start date is also going to be a required field. We want to know when we initiated that project. We have a nice calendar pop-up. By the way, at any time, you can do a preview of your form so you can see what it looks like in real time. So if I click on the preview button, I'll be able to see what I've created up until this point. I have a few more modifications to make, so let's go back to Caspio. Completion date is also going to be a required field. We have project status. When you first create the project, what I like to do is just a personal preference, is I like to make this field hidden and assign a default value of new because every time I submit the form, every single project will be new. And then somebody else on the team can change the status from new to pending, completed, archived, whatever other status you might have for your project-related application. Let's go down to the Assign To field. Now for the Assign To field, we can turn this into a dropdown. Now, I don't have another table that lists down all of my employees in the organization, so I will just simply add custom values to my dropdown. However, if you had a table that contained a list of all of your employees, you could do a lookup table and quickly link to that table that contains all the user information. This is a much more effective and efficient way to building dropdowns and also allows you to create a one-to-many so that you can associate all the projects that are linked to all the employees. So I will revert back to custom values and very quickly just maybe add John Doe, maybe Karen Lee. So we have two employees inside a dropdown. And then created by, now with this field, what I would normally do is make that field hidden and then use the authentication value, which is not listed inside this dropdown option. But if you authenticate the form based on the user table, whoever is logged inside the application, we hide that field and we automatically stamp the user ID inside the projects table. And because I don't have the authentication applied to my submission form, I'm just gonna revert back to my text field and maybe make that field required so the end user has to input their name. However, this process can be automated. As I just mentioned, you make the field hidden and whoever is logged inside the application, we can stamp the user's ID inside the projects table so that we can relate and know which team member is creating the projects. On Caspio submission forms, you can also add rules if you want to do conditional logic to show and hide fields and make fields required. It's all point and click. 
And then on the next screen, if you wish to send email notifications, you can go to messaging options, enable SMS and email. If you want to notify the person that's submitting the form and also notify somebody else in the organization, hey, new project has been created. Let's go ahead and log in and take action on that project. If you're done, you can always click finish at any time to save your changes. And this allows you to build your very first data page. If you're ready to publish that form to a website for the end users to be able to look at it, you can hit the deploy link, enable deployment status, and then Caspi is going to give us four different deployment methods with the embed model being the most popular. All you do is copy the snippet of code into your website and you'll be able to see that form seamlessly embed. If you wish to see a preview of the form once again, you can always click on the preview link so that you can see what the final version of that form looks like where we have a nice drop down. And again, as I mentioned, you can hide that field and automatically stamp the ID of the person that's logged in if you authenticate the submission form in the future. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. For a much more in-depth video on how to modify labels, move fields around, add subheadings and headings to your form, check out the suggested video and we'll see you there. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Bye-bye.